Many Samsung phones just got dozens of incredible new features with the recent One UI 5 update. And in this video, we'll be taking a look at the best new features. So here I have the Galaxy Z Fold 3 with One UI 4.1.1 on the left and the Galaxy Z Fold 4 with One UI 5 on the right. So you guys can more easily see the differences between the two. But to be clear, One UI 5 is available on the Fold 3. I just haven't updated it yet. The first thing I wanna show you is a brand new powerful widget. So let's go ahead and long press on both to bring up the widget options. Go to widgets, and you'll see this new option here called smart suggestions. And this is very different than the previous smart widget option. And the smart widget option also received some significant updates that I'll get to in a second. First, let's go ahead and place the smart suggestions widget. So as you can see, I have two different versions of it open right now. When you first drop the smart suggestions widget, it'll look something like this, giving you application recommendations. And over time, the Smart Suggestions widget will analyze how you're using your phone and recommend different applications depending on the time of day and what you're doing. The Smart Suggestions widget above has been on my page for a little while, so as you can see, it has more specific recommendations, even down to opening up a conversation with a specific person. So I definitely recommend trying out this widget so you can get fast access to the most relevant applications right when you need them. The Smart widget has been replaced with something called Stacks. To create a stack, all you have to do is have two widgets of the same size, and long press one of them and drag it on top of the other one. This will create a stack of widgets that you can then swipe through to find the most relevant widget that you need. This is an excellent feature to declutter your homepage, but it doesn't stop at just widget stacking. If you long press it, you'll see this option called edit stack. And if you tap that, you see this other option down here called auto rotate widgets. This works similar to the smart suggestions for the applications, but this works for the widgets. So it'll analyze your usage patterns and figure out which widget you're most likely to need at any given time. If you wanna reorder your widgets, just long press one of them and drag it over. And if you'd like to remove a widget, just long press it, drag it down and hold for a second, then drop it wherever you'd like. If you long press on a widget within the stack that's customizable, you'll see a settings option appear. And if you tap that, you can customize that specific widget. And if I go ahead and make some changes here, then tap save, it'll apply to just that widget but none of the other widgets. If all the widgets within a stack are resizable, you'll be able to long press the stack and change the size however you'd like, and that'll apply to all of the widgets within the stack. If there's a widget within the stack that is not resizable, the widget stack will be locked to the size of that widget. If you wanna quickly add more widgets to the stack without having to first add the widget to your homepage, then dragging and dropping onto the stack, you can just long press the stack, then tap edit stack, scroll all the way to the right, then tap the plus icon, and you can add any other widget that matches the size of the stack from here. This next improvement allows you to start multiple timers. All you have to do is tap the plus icon in the upper right corner, select a new time and tap start. And you can do this for as many timers as you need. Tapping the plus icon on older versions only allows you to add a preset timer, but doesn't allow you to have two concurrent timers. On One UI 5, you also get this new icon up here. And if you tap this icon, you can see all of your timers on one page. If you navigate back to your home page, the timer that pops up will be your most recently selected timer. So if I go back into my timers and select a different timer, then go back to the home page, that timer will be the one that shows up. The camera also gets some significant upgrades. If I switch over to the rear facing cameras, then swipe across the zoom levels, you'll see that the zoom bar has been shrunken down a bit to make it easier to zoom all the way in or out in a single swipe. The pro photo and video options also get a significant upgrade. If you tap one of the settings to adjust, you'll now get a little icon. And if you tap that, you'll get information describing exactly how that feature works. So if you've previously been intimidated by the pro photo and video modes, definitely give it a shot again and use all of these tips to help you get the perfect picture. And if you look in the opposite corner, you see that the pro modes now also support a histogram. Jumping into the camera settings, you see that there's a new option here called watermark and this adds a name and date onto the photo. By default, it's just gonna have the model name of your phone, but you can edit it to have it be whatever you'd like. The date and time, however, is not customizable, and you can enable or disable each one of these different options. Further down, you can also change the font style as well as the text alignment. And this works with any photo you take, including portrait photos, but it doesn't work on any video mode. If you're someone who takes a lot of food photos, you'll be happy to know that you can now use a telephoto lens to take those pictures. If you're a frequent user of the single take feature, you may be disappointed to find out that they actually removed a bunch of the options. Samsung's also shortened the amount of time that a single take runs for by five seconds. They made these two changes to try to make a single take faster and easier to use, but let me know what you think about these changes in the comments below. 
If you use a lot of photo filters, Samsung has merged the My Filters and Filters section into a single category called Filters. And you can still long press and reorder the filters however you'd like. If you go to edit a photo, then tap the smiley face icon, you can now draw perfect shapes by long pressing for a second after you're done drawing something and it'll snap to the shape you drew. This works for things like stars, hearts, arrows, and basic shapes like squares and circles too. If you try to do this on a device that doesn't have One UI 5.0, nothing happens. While we're here, you also get a lot more stickers with One UI 5.0. So if I go to the same tab, you can see that I have a lot more options for arrows and weather, and a ton more options when it comes to emojis. This next feature isn't new, but it can save you a bunch of money. If you long press on any text within a picture in the gallery app, you'll be able to select the text and have quick actions for that text. And if it's this specific web address, you can navigate to a huge deal from today's partner, Mint Mobile. I personally switched over to Mint Mobile about a month before they contacted me to partner together. So when they did, I already knew they offered great service and huge monthly savings, so it was an easy partnership to say yes to. And right now, through January 15th, Mint Mobile is doing a buy three months, get three months free special, so you can get up to six months of coverage for as little as $45 per line. And I know you probably have the same three questions I did. Can I transfer my existing number? How's the service? And why is it so affordable? You can absolutely transfer your existing number, and the service is great because it runs off T-Mobile's network. So anywhere you get T-Mobile coverage, you also get Mint coverage, and that's certainly been the case for me. I've had excellent service anywhere I've been. As for the price, Mint Mobile doesn't have any physical stores, which is a massive cost savings for them, and much of that savings is passed on to the customers. So if you want big savings like me, go to mintmobile.com slash techisode, or use the link at the top of the description or pinned comment. And if you've been using Mint Mobile, let me know how your experience has been down in the comments below. The Gallery app will now warn you if you're about to accidentally share some sensitive information. So if you accidentally left a credit card or ID in the background when you took a picture, then went to share that picture, you'd get this notification here telling you that you may be sharing personal information. If you tap the emoji icon in the Samsung keyboard, you'll see this emoji pairs option that has two emojis next to each other. If you don't see it right away, just swipe further over to the right and it should be there somewhere. With One UI 5, Samsung has added a bunch more preset animations. Not only that, but when you create a new one, you also get a bunch more emojis to pick from. If you pinch it on the home screen, you're going to get the home screen settings, then go to your wallpapers and style, then go to color palette, you'll see that you now get a bunch more options with One UI 5. On older versions of One UI, you'd be able to use the default colors or four other options but now you get four times the amount of options. Plus, you also get a basic colors option as well. So these help you really customize the look of your phone. Samsung DeX, the feature that turns your Samsung phone into a full-blown desktop computer when you plug it into a monitor, also gets its fair share of upgrades as well. For starters, you now have a dedicated search button at the bottom to help you quickly find anything you're looking for. You can also now right-click on apps for quick actions. You can finally customize the taskbar to only have what you want there. You now get a red dot added to the notification icon in the taskbar when new notifications come in. And now when you click the time and date, a little calendar will pop up and show you what you have for events today. So if you're a fan of DeX, you'll love these updates. The settings have also been revamped with some powerful new features. The first one is found in the battery and device care section and all the way at the bottom. You can see that there's a new option on One UI 5 called Maintenance Mode. If you enable this, all of your personal data, including pictures, messages, and accounts, will remain locked behind your passcode, but a repair shop will still be able to access the things that they would need to access in order to fix your phone. So I highly recommend turning this feature on if you ever need to send your phone in for repair. Back at the top of the settings page, you can see that Samsung has added this connected devices option, and this is where you can control any setting for any connected device, which includes Bluetooth devices, Samsung DeX, Android Auto, and even Link to Windows. On the previous version of One UI, you'd have to navigate to a bunch of different places to navigate to each of these individual settings. Notifications also get some improvements. If you jump in to see your app notifications pages, then select an application, you can see that you can now select which notification types are available on an app-by-app -app basis. So if there's just a few applications where you don't want their notifications to show up on the lock screen, you can disable those notifications just for those applications. On the previous version of One UI, it was all or nothing for all applications. Samsung's also made keeping your device secure easier by adding a new option in the security and privacy settings. Previously, this was called biometrics and security. Now when you tap it, you get suggestions right at the top of how to improve the security of your device. And if I tap the exclamation point, it'll tell me that I have device protection turned off. And if I tap that, I can turn it on. 
And if you're looking for all the options that were previously available, those are now behind these toggles here, as well as further down below. If you go to Device Care, then Memory, then RAM Plus, you'll see that you can now completely disable RAM Plus. And the purpose of this is to free up a few gigs of space on your internal storage. That said, I recommend not turning this off because what this feature does is allow you to have more apps open in the background at the same time. And pro tip, if you notice that some of your applications are reloading when you want them to stay loaded in RAM, you can increase the amount of storage that's used for RAM Plus, and that'll allow you to keep more apps open at the same time. Just keep in mind that the more you increase this RAM value, the less internal storage you'll have available for things like pictures and videos. That said, even 8 gigs isn't that much storage, so you probably wouldn't notice the difference. If you go to Notifications, then Do Not Disturb, then tap the Calls and Messages option, you now get the option to allow specific contacts to still contact you while you have Do Not Disturb mode on. Previously, it'd have to either be everyone, just your contacts, or your favorite contacts only. But there wasn't an option to allow just one or two contacts. If you go into General Management, you'll see a new option here called App Languages. And what this does is allow you to have a different language for each application you use. So for anyone that's multilingual, this is a great feature to have. The lock screen is now much faster to edit. All you have to do is long press it, then unlock your phone, and you'll be able to edit a live preview of the lock screen. You can change the clock style, change how the notifications appear, add contact information at the bottom in case you lose your phone, so you could put something like a friend's phone number that someone can call if they find your phone. And at the bottom, you can change your shortcuts by tapping them. And if you don't want any shortcut, you can just tap the minus icon. And at the top left, you can change your wallpaper style. Once you're done making your changes, just tap done. Previously, you'd have to tap the clock, scroll all the way to the bottom, tap settings, unlock your phone, and then you'd be taken to this screen to make all of your changes with no live preview to see what you're doing. The calendar app also gets much more useful because now when you add an appointment, if you scroll down a bit, you see that you can quickly set up a video conference for anyone who's invited to the meeting. And when you've invited people to the meeting, you get a few more options. You can now choose whether or not to let them invite other people and even choose whether or not to let them see who else was invited. If you've seen any of my top unknown features videos for previous Samsung devices, you're probably already familiar with the most powerful application on any Samsung device, Bixby Routines. Well, that application has also been revamped and renamed to Modes and Routines. The new application has a cleaner interface and has merged both modes and routines into a single application. If you're not familiar, modes used to give you up to three different modes to put your phone into, and this would enable or disable certain apps and features on your phone depending on the mode you were in. So for example, you could have a focus mode, which would automatically enable do not disturb mode and temporarily disable access to social media applications. Previously, you were limited to up to three modes, but now you could have as many modes as you'd like. There are five preset modes and you can add your own custom modes as well. And if you tap one of these modes, you could adjust what happens when the mode is enabled. And each type of mode has different settings that you can enable. The routines have also seen a significant upgrade as well. And if you want to see a deep dive on what the routines are capable of, click this card in the upper right corner. The short of it is that routines allow you to automate almost anything on your phone or connected devices like a Galaxy Watch or Galaxy Buds. And now, when you add a new routine, you get some extra features. For the if condition, you get a lot more options under the context section. You could also now automate things when you go into one of the modes I showed you earlier. There's also now an airplane mode condition, which would be super useful if you want to be able to enable airplane mode without automatically disabling Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. The then statements also see some additions. In the apps category, you can now open up app pairs directly. In the connection section, you get a lot more options. The same is also true for the display options, as well as the functions. If you pull the notification shade down, you'll see another notable change. The app icons for the notifications are now much larger, making it a lot easier to identify which application the notification came from. If you swipe down again to look at your quick toggles, then swipe all the way over and tap the plus icon, and swipe across, you'll see that you now get a bunch of accessibility toggles to use as well. So if you often need to use the high contrast fonts, color inversion, the color filter, or color adjustments, you can just drag them down into the quick toggles to get much faster access to them. And while we're looking at the quick toggles, I also want to point out that the focus mode, bedtime mode, and Bixby routines have all been replaced by the modes quick toggle. So if I tap this toggle, it allows me to quickly select any of my modes. But if I tap the text below the toggle, I can then tap details and jump right over to my routines. Aside from the app icon changes in the notification shade, Samsung's also made a bunch of other subtle changes throughout the applications. For example, if you go to media output, the old version would turn basically everything to white in the background, but the new version allows you to still see some of your home screen. 
And when you navigate through your settings, you'll now get an animation when you change pages instead of having it just blink to the next page. And even using the recent apps button gives you a slightly different animation where the application that you're switching from does a bigger arc on the new version than it does on the old version. So many of these are very subtle, but they do look nice. Let me know if you found any other animation changes down in the comments below. The smart view feature, which is what enables you to mirror your phone's screen to a TV, also got some upgrades. If you tap the three dots in the upper right corner, then go to settings, you'll see a new option called hide notifications on TV. So now when you're mirroring your phone's screen to the TV, you won't also have your notifications streamed to the TV. And fun fact, if you go into labs, you get the option to allow all apps to be cast to your TV. And this should override anything that would otherwise prevent the app from being cast to the TV. Now that you know the best new features on your Samsung phone, check out this video over here to see the top 25 must have accessories for your phone and consider subscribing to see my deep dive coverage of the upcoming Galaxy S23. That's it for this tech episode. God bless guys and I'll catch you in the next one.